lights, camera, showtime. Welcome everybody to an all new Downright Sports. Today is a special day. The NBA is back. Ooh, and I'm dropping rhymes like my name is Damian Lillard versus Shaq. Ooh, Lillard, stay in your lane. You don't want to go against Shaq. Shaq is one of the few people who actually rapped with Biggie while he was alive. Respect. Anyway, today we preview the NBA season. We break, I break down uh, who I think is going to win the championship for the first time. I actually do it before the season tips off for the regular season. And for those of you that have never seen this show before, it's the most underground sports show from a sports critic that you have ever heard before. I'm quoting that phrase. Also, subscribe at the bottom at YouTube and keep watching. But anyway, let's go back to the future, shall we? Last year was a very, very weird year. Very good year for the North, though, I must say. Uh, the Toronto Raptors last year made a weird trade going to get Kawhi Leonard, who should have probably been the league MVP, but pff, let's give it to the Greek Freak, who helped Milwaukee not only just make it to the playoffs, but be the number one seed in all of the basketball world. Contrary, they still would lose in the semifinals because Philadelphia, well, but yeah, so... Who doesn't matter? Toronto won the championship last year. Uh, Kawhi Leonard won the MVP. They knocked off the team. We might have seen the end of an era as they beat the Golden State Warriors, who was also the number one team from the West Coast. But they would be Golden State. Now, they did beat Golden State without um, Kevin Durant and without Klay Thompson. So, basically, they beat a wounded team. So, is it a championship with an asterisk? Hmm, we'll never know because we'll never get that rematch because let's go to the offseason. Kawhi Leonard decided he was going to take his talents from the north and he was going to travel as if he was in a Game of Thrones situation to the coast or to the south, well, more to the west. And he would join the LA Clippers, leaving everybody on the edge. Will he join the Lakers? Will he join? No, he joined the Clippers. We always knew. And because he joined the Clippers, Paul George, who was the number two lead scorer in all of basketball last year, felt he couldn't play in little old Oklahoma City anymore and decided he wanted to be traded to the Clippers and he teamed up with Kawhi and the two of them on the Clippers together. Uh, the Clipper, the other offseason moves were LeBron and his, um, his folks found a way to get Anthony Davis to join him on the Lakers, something that fell apart during the season last year for the Lakers. It was like a, something out of Days of Our Lives. It was just drama everywhere. They tried to make these trades and they did not work, and it was so bad that Magic Johnson resigned and walked away and told nobody and still seems to be friends with everybody. Hmm. Anyway, uh, so now... The Lakers did sign in the offseason. They did make some moves, which we'll talk about. But uh, Anthony Davis joined them. Uh, Kevin Durant and uh, Kyrie Irving joined the Nets, even though Kevin Durant won't be playing uh, this year. So the Nets just have co uh, uh, Irving. Uh, Kemba Walker uh, left the Hornets and decided he was going to go to Boston. Good pickup for them. And then all the other moves other people made. Oh, not to mention, Zion Williams is going to be in New Orleans. So New Orleans, interesting. Hmm. So the league okay to trade for the Lakers to get Anthony Davis. And then, somehow, they end up getting Zion Williams in the number one draft pick. Interesting. Interesting. While there are some teams that have never had a number one draft pick before, which is kind of weird. Hmm. That's twice the uh, New Orleans seems to always come up when the NBA is involved. I'm just saying. Just saying. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the. We're going to dive into the season in the next segment. I make some predictions, and we also need to know what it's like to live and die in LA. Downright Sports. Check it out. So, the NBA season just upon us is a couple weeks, the 23rd, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. It's going to be a long year anyway. But the question is, and if you hear snoring in the background, that's my co-host, the dog. But in any case, um, what we have here this coming season is a lot of new changes. For the, the, the WNBA, I mean the WNBA, the NBA is actually in a new era. It's in a new regime. 
passing of the torches is happening. As LeBron has said time and time again, the ball will go through Anthony Davis. Um, we have now the Clippers are, in a, are now restructured. The Knicks are doing something. And there are so many teams that are either in a rebuild or just right there and they made some moves. So, as I do every year, I picked a bunch of teams that I think we all should watch for. The Lakers, Golden State, Philly, Clippers, the Trailblazers I threw in there. And... Did I say New Orleans? Let's say it again. New Orleans. So I believe if you look at some of these teams and how they broke down on the moves that they made this offseason, these moves will either make or break the team for good or bad. And you just look at the Pelicans. The Pelicans themselves made, they traded Anthony Davis basically for the entire Lakers roster. They got Alonzo Ball, uh, Josh Hart, and Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram and I think Ball will be key for this team because now Ball doesn't have to be the center of the Lakers. He doesn't have to be the first pick. They got drafted by the LA Lakers with Magic Johnson in his ear, LeBron James standing here, and his daddy talking all day. And I think Brandon Ingram now gets to take what he likes to do in that shot after shot after shot. And then you add Zion Williamson where he's going to have all of the attention. And then you put Zion with some veterans. You got J.J. Redick. You have... Um, Derek Favors, these guys are going to be able to help these young guys mold them, play off of veterans, grizzled veterans that can get these guys to where they need to be. I'll predict where they will be. Then you got the Lakers. Before they lost to Marcus Cousins, I said, okay, the Lakers is going to be iffy because I didn't like the Cousins fit. I liked the Dwight Howard fit. They went inside the Dwight Howard after Cousins tore his ACI. Achilles, he's, he's hurt. He's done for the rest of the year. Maybe done for his career, honestly. But I like the move the Lakers made. Uh, Avery Bradley, uh, Danny Green, key guy, and they kept Rajon Rondo. So you're going out there with Rondo, Kuzma, Davis, Dwight, and LeBron. LeBron and Rondo can get those guys open. And not to mention, the White Howard's never played with a guy like the, the LeBron James or Rajon Rondo or Anthony Davis. You're going to see the resurgence of the White Howard this year because you got to guard two people. And the White Howard still can rebound and he can still put the ball back in the basket. I say the Lakers play more of a 4 and 1. Just spread the floor, leave the White by himself, and let him go to work. It could work out. Then you got, uh, did I throw Philly in there? Yeah, it Philly is in there. Philly didn't make any major move. They kept Tobias Harris. They let um, uh, Jimmy Butler go, who I think is overrated anyway. And they picked up Al Horford, which is actually good because they need somebody that can uh, kind of push um, uh, and be to either stay on the court or if he gets hurt, they got a backup. Because Horford is a vet. He can ball. He can score. And Embiid could do all those things, but Embiid only plays six games out of the whole year because he needs a lot of vacation time. He needs a tan. His back is always hurt. I'm just messing with him. But the guy doesn't play a lot. And for them to, for Philly to make the next step, they're going to need him to be in the game. Uh, Horford gives him more rest, and that's what's important. For the Blazers, who I added at the last second, I like the combination of Lord and McCullough. The problem is they added uh, Whiteside, good defensive center, but they need that third score. I'm going to play GM real fast for the, the Trailblazers. <clears throat> they need to make a move to get one more key guy. He doesn't have to be a megastar, but they can. I would will, I will call Minnesota because they ain't going nowhere. Either give me Wiggins or give me Towns or call Oklahoma City because that's a dumpster fire. Let me try to get Steven Adams, let me get Otto Porter, or call Memphis, and let me get um, Andre Iguodala. They need a third guy, but that scrappy guy, that guy that doesn't care if he scores or he does, but if he does score, he does it with efficiency, because they got just a good backcourt, if not as Golden State. And this is the year you try to take down Golden State, and <clears throat> while the Lakers and the Clippers are going to be butting heads against each other all year, this could be the year the Trailblazers slither in there. They always finish in the top four. It just takes just that one that one series to put you through. And I can see the Trailblazers becoming that next 
legit backcourt. Not three championships, but maybe they get one. Hey, Toronto won. Anything's possible. And then, let's make this quick. We got the Clippers, who did add Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. That's enough. The Clippers made the playoffs last year, and you couldn't name four players on the team. But this year, they added two All-Stars, and uh, should be MVP most years. They are going to be much better, and I'll tell you where they rank in a sec. And then, where are we at? Am I missing the terms? Oh yeah, I got everybody. Can believe that? I got. Oh, Golden State. Golden State's going to be an enigma. They have lost Kevin Durant. They don't have Klay Thompson. They don't have DeMarcus Cousins. They still got Draymond Green, and they still got Steph Curry. Do you as management, as they open up that new arena, say, hey guys, let's go for it. Let's see if we can do it. Or do you say, let's take the throttle off. Let's see what we can do. But let's save it so when we get Clay back and then we go into next year's offseason, we can maybe pick up another player and then we take another run. Because Draymond, Steph, and Clay ain't getting no younger. And they've got a lot of wear and tear on them tires. And that Oldsmobile is pumping and pumping and pumping. And they're going to need a little more gas. So <clears throat> it's going to be a kind of a weird year to see. This could be the year Steph wins his third MVP, in my opinion. Because he's going to have to dominate the ball. Clay may not come back until after the All-Star break, if any. So this could be, if anybody, if anybody could go win the MVP award by himself, it's definitely him. Now, I'm going to give myself an extra minute and a half to tell you, wonderful folks, who I have making the playoffs once I find what I'm looking for. Here we go. So, last year's playoffs was as such. Somewhere on the screen you'll see it. But this year, I have it like so. Let's start with the East. So the East is going to pretty much go like this. Boston, number one. Philly, number two. Milwaukee, number three. The Pacers, number four. Even They're going to get Otto Porter back, and they were a good team last year. The Nets at number five. I think uh, a team who was um, six last year. Uh, Kyrie can make him a five seed. Miami bounces back, and they didn't even make the playoffs last year. They will be the sixth seed. Jimmy Butler could do that. The uh, Pistons will be the seventh seed. And then, wait for it, the New York Knicks will be the eighth seed. I think the Knicks have enough to scrap it in there. They'll probably be a 500 team, but they're going to make the playoffs this year. Uh, Washington, Hornets, Atlanta, Bulls. And Cleveland will all be trash. <laughs> they won't be trash. I just think the Magic and Toronto and Cleveland will be the odd teams out. They won't have enough to get it done. But I think the Knicks, R.J. Barrett, he's got a lot to prove since his buddy's going to be down in Bourbon Street trying to beat everybody. And then we look at the West. Lakers will be the one seed. I took a lot. I think the Lakers and the Clippers are going to battle it out. They'll be the one seed. Trailblazers will be the three. Denver, four. Jazz, five. Uh, Warriors, six. Uh, Rockets seventh, and the Pelicans will be the eighth seed, leaving the Spurs, Thunder, and Dallas right there at the border. The Rockets is going to be a funny looking team because they got two guys that like to dominate the ball, and they have nothing else. So we'll see how that turns out. I know everybody's like, "Oh, they they're the favorite." They're not the favorite. They're not even close to being the favorite. I'm sick of the Rockets. Done. James Harden. <laughs> anyway, when we come back, we're going to wrap the show up. Uh, yeah, that was more. So, <clears throat> let's make this quick. We're going to do the clubhouse and the WNBA corner, but let's go to the clubhouse first. As of yesterday, uh, the baseball playoffs began, and it was a doozy. The uh, Washington Nationals took care of the Milwaukee Brewers. I brain fart there. It took care of the Milwaukee Brewers in a walk-off. Mm, go ahead, run. Yeah, uh, Jay Solo, uh, yeah. Jay Soloto uh, came up and would hit a double and later get tagged down, just celebrating and getting stuck in the middle of nowhere. But uh, would help the Nationals after being down three, enough, three to one going into the bottom of the eighth, two outs. He came up and would hit a double after a hit by pitch and a broken bat single by uh, the veteran Jordan uh, uh, Ryan Zimmerman. Jordan Zimmerman is a pitcher for Detroit, but. Uh, uh, Steven Strasburg, bravo to you, sir. As you came in and gave them strong inning shutdown innings, one hit in uh, the three innings that you pitched, and it was a 
they were the uh, Nationals were able to beat Milwaukee's best pitcher, their closer, who just looked like he was lost. And I said something to myself while watching the game. Um, he's all over the place. If the Nats could just sit back and let him just self-destruct, Milwaukee should have went and got him after he did the hit by pitch, in all honesty. Tonight, you're going to have Tampa Bay travels out to Oakland to host the one game player for the American League to see who plays the Nationals. I mean, not the Nationals, to see who plays um, Houston. Uh, <clears throat> the Both teams this year would, uh, um, would have Oakland come out of nowhere to uh, win the second seed. Uh, Cleveland was the, the thought to be the team, and Cle uh, Oakland eventually not just knocked them out, but surpassed Tampa to host the first game, uh, the only game, <laughs> and then they'll go on. Uh, WNBA Corner, hey, check it out. So, oh, before we go, uh, I got Oakland. Went into me. Oakland's got a lot of firepower in Tampa Bay. God bless them. Did a little engine that could. We are going to see the budget game tonight. It's two of the lowest um, <clears throat> budgeted salary teams in all of sports go at it against each other. So you get the the, the Dollar General game will be tonight. Uh, <clears throat> and then to wrap it up, the WNBA corner. Uh, Connecticut Sun took care of the Washington Mystics last night. Jones uh, set a career and a WNBA Finals record. Uh, 32 points and 18 rebounds. No other lady has done so in WNBA history. Says a lot because a lot of greats have played in the Finals. And Elena Della Don only played three minutes. She left in the first quarter uh, and she's getting an MRI on her back because she was having back spasms. So hopefully she'll be back by Thursday's game. Series is now tied 1-1 one, one and, one, and they're going to Connecticut now for two, so see how that's going to work out. Hey, thank you all for watching. Uh, fun show. I was all over the place, which is what I really like. Uh, more NBA to come, so I got time to backtrack or go over whatever I missed. Um, subscribe at the bottom. Follow us. <laughs> um, hit it, Go to uh, check out the podcast at I'm Just Talking the Podcast, where I'm going to discuss more NBA stuff. This coming week, I'm going to do a uh, new podcast. will be probably uploaded today or Thursday, one of the two. Um, and uh, look for one on Sunday, the Sunday edition. I really like doing that. You guys enjoy. Have fun out there. Be safe. Deuces.